27 we have to look for the carbon that's joined to four different groups to find the number of chiral carbons so the chiral carbon for this molecule is here so there's only one if you're wondering about this one you have to be careful that this group is the same as this group so this is not a chiral carbon right? only this one is Twenty-eight. How can we distinguish between cyclohexene, which is an alkene, and cyclohexanol, which has a alcohol group? The first one, Tolens reagent, reacts with neither. Bromine will react with the alkene. It will decolorize, but it will not react with your alcohol. So we can use it to distinguish. Two four DMPH will not react with both. and your um, reducing agent will react with neither also they will, will not react with both of them twenty nine we have c four h eight and they want you to figure out what it becomes after it undergoes um, bromination and then nucleophilic substitution reaction. The, the issue is what is the structure of C4H8? That is actually given in the next reaction. C4H8 under hydrogenation will become methylpropane. So we know that it is actually this structure. Okay, because it could also have been this structure if we do not have the information here. So this information tells us that it's this structure. From this structure, we work backwards and know that there must be a double bond between two of the carbons. Okay, it doesn't matter which carbon we choose, but must be the center one to the one of the terminal carbons. So this is the C4H8 that we start off with. Once we know this, we will add the bromine. And with the bromine, we will replace the bromine with OH for the next step to get this product. So compound Z will have the structure okay, CH3, CH3, CO, CH2OH 30. How many of the isomeric alcohols with this formula will produce an alkene that has, that's, can produce a cis trans isomer? So, if you are confused, what you can do is write out the possible alcohols that we can get, the isomers, from C4H9OH. And then from there, you see that, are there anyone that can give us cis trans? For if the OH is here, the double bond will only be formed down here, and there will be no cis trans. OH here, we can have a double bond here that give us back this one or we can have a double bond between these two carbon okay, and when that between these two carbon we can have a cis trans if it's this structure a branch the double bond will be between these two carbons there will no be, not be any cis trans if the OH is here double bond will also be between the center and any of the terminal carbon no cis trans so there's only one possible uh, isomer that will is like is possible to give us a cis trans on dehydration. Thirty one. You have to know your bond angles well. Okay, SO two, CO two. So I draw all of them out. SO two is slightly less than 120, bent, CO2, linear, H2O, this is tetrahedral for CH4, methane, ammonia, trigonal pyramidal, BF3, trigonal planar. So once you have all these angles in mind, you can see that all of them is true. SO2 is smaller than CO2, H2O, 
smaller than CH4 and H3 smaller than BF3. Energy profile diagram. Okay, statement one. W is change in energy of four reaction. No, W is actually the activation energy. So statement one is wrong already. That means two and three must be correct. Z is the backward reaction change in energy. Y is the activation energy. It's correct. X is the change for the forward reaction W is the activation energy of the forward thirty three involved just understanding the assumptions for ideal gas law okay that the molecules do not interact unless when they collide with each other they don't have uh, any attraction to each other, negligible attraction, and the space they occupy is much, much, much greater than the actual size of the molecule. So these are assumptions for ideal gas laws. Thirty-four. Group two compounds. Radium carbonate. The decomposition as we go down the group, the carbonates are more stable. Uh, to heat, so we will not expect radium carbonate to decompose using a Bunsen flame. The hydroxides, as you go down the group, the hydroxides will be more soluble. The solubility increases down the group, so statement two is wrong. Radium, as you go down the group, it will become more and more reactive, so we expect radium to actually react with cold water. Thirty five magnesium barium nitrate. What happens when the firework is lit? The magnesium will be oxidized with the atmosphere and all that you'll burn and you come magnesium oxide. Your barium nitrate will decompose under the heat group two compounds and when they decompose they will become group two oxides. So we have barium oxide and magnesium oxide. Oxide. In a car engine, metallic element X forms Y, which then subsequently reacts with half a mole of gases oxygen. Right. It is again a very common mistake that students will assume that it's carbon become carbon monoxide, and then with half a mole of oxygen, it becomes carbon dioxide. Um, not in the context of the examiner's report in Cambridge. Okay, this doesn't really happen uh, under atmosphere conditions. Okay. Not really spontaneous under atmosphere conditions. Burning, lightning and all that perhaps. Right. So actually it's talking about nitrogen. Nitrogen will become nitrogen monoxide and then it becomes nitrogen dioxide. So using nitrogen we will see the other the three options. Oxidation number increases by two. This is correct. Molecule of Y has no unpaired electrons. Nitrogen oxides. We have focusing on the outer electrons, we have five electrons for nitrogen, six for oxygen. We have an odd number of electrons, we will have an unpaired electron in this molecule. We have a lone pair. Or, or not not really a lone pair, an unpaired electron. So it will have an unpaired electron. Molecule of Z contains three oxygen, it contains um, two oxygen, NO2. So two and three are wrong. Thirty seven C four H ten O First thing to figure out is C4H10 is like CNH2M plus 2O. So it's telling us it's uh, so-called saturated with an O. Within the syllabus, we assume it will be alcohol. It will not be a aldehyde or a ketone because it's all saturated. It doesn't, doesn't have a double bond involving the C. 
so it's alcohol which results will not be obtained since there's no um, no carbonyl groups we will not get precipitates orange PPT with 240 mph or reaction with tolens reagent okay so one is out or rather one is the correct choice in this case because it will not be obtained it's too possible no change there's no carbonyl group or aldehyde so there's no change and there will be no change if we use potassium dichromate when your alcohol is actually tertiary alcohol so two is possible if you're talking about tertiary alcohol three three is also possible if you're talking about primary or secondary alcohol there will be no change for the first two but then no the color change will be oxidized if it's primary or secondary alcohol so two and three could be obtained Okay, one would not be obtained thirty eight when we get our precipitates our silver halides which are the ones that will dissolve when concentrated aqueous ammonia is added silver bromide and silver chloride will dissolve in concentrated aqueous ammonia silver iodide will not be soluble okay, to complete the the concept if you're talking about dilute um, only silver chloride will be soluble bromide and iodide will not be okay. but since you're talking about concentrated ammonia bromide and chloride it's possible ppt first and then dissolves which one will give us ethanoic acid boil under reflux and then acidification for our halogen alkane if we boil with sodium hydroxide we will get our alcohol if we acidify alcohol we will still get our alcohol okay, so number one is out for second one we have our ester we boil with sodium hydroxide we will get our carboxylate and then we acidify further we will get our ethanoic acid our nitriles we do alkali hydrolysis we get CH3COO- and then same thing we acidify we'll get CH3COOH Forty. which pair of homologous series have the same CH ratio in the general formula you can use the general Rich equation CN H2M plus 2 and all that. If not, okay, you can also use some um, some examples that we can compare to. For example, I use three carbons to be consistent. You can see that the ratio of the hydrogens and the carbons are the same. I'm talking about aldehydes and ketones. acids and esters alkenes and ketones okay, so use general formula if you want to or you can use specific examples if it's clearer in this case all three will contain the same CH ratio okay. 